Braxpert is an interesting program that's been around for a couple of years but has undergone many stages of development, making it a very powerful tool that can deal with light pollution gradients, noise removal and, more recently, image deconvolution. Even better, with all this functionality, the program remains free to download. After installation and when running the program for the first time, you will be prompted to download any necessary AI files. This shouldn't take too long and you can check what's been downloaded by clicking on the blue advanced tab on the right hand side of the screen. It all looks quite complicated, but the top half of the menu can be ignored unless you need to fine tune any of the background extraction parameters when not using the AI mode. At the bottom right we can see the AI models that have been downloaded for background extraction, object deconvolution and denoising. At the time of producing this video, these are the most up-to-date AI models. In this video, we'll have an introductory look at the program and examine its powerful features. At the time of writing this review, the latest version of Graxper is in a beta stage. I've noticed that occasionally the program will hang, but generally it performs well and should improve in the near future. In any case, it's a very easy program to use, so it's ideal for people starting out in astrophotography. Here's a view of the user interface and it's very nicely laid out in a logical fashion. At top left we can see the main program features and along the bottom are adjustments for stretching the image making it brighter or darker as well as boosting the saturation. For this demonstration I'll be using an image of the very interesting polar ring galaxy NGC 660 that was taken with the 24 inch telescope and CMOS camera which are part of the Telescope Live remote imaging platform. We can load the master RGB file by clicking on the green button under the loading menu and in this case it's a 32-bit FITS file. Notice that there are edge artifacts around the image that are caused by dithering the data during the acquisition stage. The first task is to crop these from the image as if they are left in will definitely degrade the result. To do this, click on the plus sign to the right of the crop menu. You can zoom in and out of the image very easily by using the mouse wheel and notice that now we have a crop boundary in yellow around the image. It's very easy to click on either of the yellow circles to crop the image and remove the artifacts. Press the green apply crop button to remove the edge artifacts. Continuing, we can now run Graxpert's background extraction tool. This is very similar um, to the way that dynamic background extraction used to work in PixInsight, but with the AI mode that's now available in Graxpert, it's a much easier and simplified task. Click on the plus sign on the right side of the background extraction menu and choose the AI option from the interpolation method drop list. There are other options found here, but starting with AI is the easiest. The gradient visible in the image is probably caused by moonlight and we can temporarily enhance it by adjusting both the sigma options and the saturation strength at the bottom of the screen. I'll use the 15% 3 sigma option from the list and move the saturation slider to 2. I usually leave the smoothing slider on zero, but opinions are divided on this, so by all means try experimenting with your own images. Click on the green calculate button to run the background extraction. The extraction has worked well and we can do a before and after comparison by using the drop list at the top of the screen. 
If you click on original, you'll see the image before correction. Gradient correction shows the modified image and you can view the model used to correct the image by clicking on the background option. We can now revert the image back by reducing the sigma and saturation sliders. With the background corrected, we can apply deconvolution to the image by clicking on the plus sign to the right of the deconvolution menu. After some experimentation, I found the values of 0.7 for the deconvolution strength and 4.8 for the image full width at half maximum value worked well. As before, we can use the drop list at the top of the screen to compare to the original. And so far it's looking pretty good. Finally, we can apply denoising to the image by clicking on the plus sign to the right of the denoising menu. Once again, some experimentation will be required but I found a value of around 0.7 works well. Of all the processes that we've looked at, denoising seems to take the longest to process and even on my high spec PC it takes a while to complete. As you can see, it's done a very good job. Now the final task is to save the image by clicking, as you might expect by now, on the plus sign to the right of the saving menu. Under the drop list, there are many options, but I recommend that if you have loaded a 32-bit FITS file, which we did at the beginning, and is recommended, then use this option to save the image in the same format using the green Save Selected button. Graxpert will modify the file name when saving so the original file is not overwritten. There's also a tick box when you can opt to save any stretches that have been applied to the image and this might be useful if you are outputting the image as a TIFF file, perhaps for modifications in Adobe Photoshop or Affinity Photo and in that case you'll be working with 16-bit files. As usual, it's very useful to compare the denoised image to the original and also review all of the individual processing stages. I think that this latest version of Graxpert is a very useful program for beginning and advanced astrophotographers. The interface is clear and very simple to use. And, as mentioned earlier, it's still free, so a big hats off for the program developers.